Hello, and welcome to the Ask Ezra podcast, real people with intimacy challenges and real intimacy coaching. I'm Sir Ezra Algos, intimacy coach at askezra.info. If this is your first episode, you might be asking yourself, what is intimacy coaching? One definition is that an intimacy coach helps people feel safer, closer, and more connected to their lovers, friends, and even themselves. It is my goal to help people become closer to the people that they care about. So join me for this session already in progress. I think BDSM is a fantastic playing field. It's a fantastic stage that we can use to act out different impulses that we have in risk-reduced ways. And I think that's the part that, that you really need to work on because you're the don't, reducing the risk. Yeah. You don't have that skill yet. No, you don't, I don't. You're a vanilla bean in the kinky mix. <laughs> and a lot of people see that as vulnerable. I know. Yeah. And I think too is the age. Yeah. Well, they often will equate youth with ignorance, Stupid. unfortunately. <laughs> so I had a couple people that I met at the event that I went to. It was like the only two people that I hung out with the whole night and I was just talking to them about like the weird people that I've experienced and whatnot and they said that I should change my age to older yeah like 99 okay and people won't approach you yeah if you're a 99 year old woman from Antarctica yeah I didn't understand why people did that yeah now you do now I do (laughs) now you do (laughs) I was like obviously I figured that not that many people in Antarctica would be on Fat Life. So I knew that there was a reason, but I didn't know what it was. <laughs> There's more people on Fat Life in Antarctica than there are people in Antarctica. For sure. Yeah. 100%. 100%. Yeah. <laughs> so that might be my next step is just changing that. But yeah. I still feel like I look young. Don't put a picture up. Okay. You, you don't need it. And I hate to say it. But it's like, it's butting against this entitlement that you might have as a woman around people approaching you, Mm -hmm. right? I think that we are socialized, that men are socialized to approach women and women are socialized to wait to be approached. It's kind of a terrible system because then you end up with catcalling and harassment and stalking, right? I don't think it's really worth it. So if you don't have a picture, you can even change it to like NB, non-binary, or whatever, like just to be not a woman on here. And if they can't see you, if they can't latch on to that, if they don't know where you are, then you're not going to get any attention. And that can yeah. be that can be kind of devastating for people who have come to expect a certain amount of attention. But I mean, you know, FetLife is not the place where you want that attention. No. <laughs> right. And if you do get that attention, you want it for the right reasons, not mm-hmm. just because you look young and vulnerable. Even in my like vanilla dating life I went through a fate I clearly I'm like still in it um but it was a lot worse a couple years ago where I was just extremely unsafe like I would be talking to somebody on bumble or something and they'd be like want to come over I'd be like okay and I would go to this random stranger's house and so my therapist at the time <laughs> put me on a sex ban because I was doing that shit So maybe I should just do that again. But I wasn't having sex with these people. Well, I mean, it doesn't matter. This is the same situation where you're you're not critically evaluating the risks that you're walking into. I know. And it's crazy because it's almost like an an impulse. That's what me and my therapist would say that I had like almost like an impulse control issue when it comes to Mm -hmm. men. And, um, but everything else in my life, I'm like, so on top of my stuff, just that. And there's probably an issue there. There's probably like an early childhood (laughs) wound, you know, like I like to say, like, I'm not a therapist. I'm, I can't, I can't help you diffuse bombs, but I can help you walk around them sometimes. I thought you were going to say, I can help you set them. I can help you set, I can help you set them. (laughs) Yeah. You want some trauma? Let's go. I'm just kidding. That's not what I do. (laughs) hey everybody it's ezra and wow isn't that exciting wouldn't you like to be the next guest on our show well you can just email askezra8 at gmail.com and hey 
if being on the show is too much and you'd just like to get some private intimacy coaching, that's available too. Now back to our show. No, so there's a lot of options in the same way, right? So mm-hmm. some people self-collar. So just by the virtue of wearing a collar, you look owned. And then it means that somebody is going to have to deal with the other person. It is a deterrent of a certain amount of attention on its own. Second, it gives you an opportunity to set boundaries on yourself. Let's say you had a little sister who was on this journey with you. Okay. What kind of boundaries would you put on that person to keep them safe? On my little sister? Yeah. Let's say it sounds like you have a little sister. No, I don't. You don't. Okay. So let's <laughs> I'm say I'm the let's, little sister. You're the little sister. Well, let's imagine you have a sister one year younger than yourself. Okay. So not a significant uh-huh. age difference, but you feel responsible. So what are you going to do? What are you going to tell that person that they need to do in order to be safe in this space or relatively safe? I'd be smarter than me. Uh <laughs> Don't go over to their house and meet in a public place. Probably don't actually meet anybody off of Fat Life. <laughs> and it's weird because in my head, I know these things, but I'm just like, man, eh, it doesn't apply to me. Yeah, it does. I know. Yeah, it really does. It <laughs> applies the most to you. <laughs> right. But so the point I'm trying to make is that you can collar yourself. Mm-hmm. And most collared relationships, they have rules. And so you can write your own rules. And those are great start. Don't go over somebody's house, meet them in public. Don't meet people on FetLife. And I might add specific time restraints because you want a rule to be something you can follow because you're going to throw the whole thing out as soon as you meet somebody that you want to go over their house, right? Because right. you can say, you're never going to go over somebody's house. It's unreasonable, mm-hmm. right? So may it say minus three months. You have to know somebody for three months. I mean, that's, that's my rule. My rule is I don't sleep with people that I met unless I've known them for three months. That's Be- so long. It isn't though. It isn't because you're not wasting your time with people who are not good for you. So three months goes by fast. And then I know who I'm sleeping with. There's no surprises. I'm not going to be like, oh, okay. <laughs> we have, we have multiple personalities. Okay. <laughs> I would have loved yeah. to know that before, mm-hmm. right? Like you never know what you're walking into. You could literally walk into a serial killer's house because they can put up a front for a, for a day mm-hmm. and that's all you're asking. So what about 90 days? I feel like that's asking a lot of me, but I can try it. I mean, it's your rule. <laughs> you make it how you want to. What is the alternative? Just having universally negative experiences? Yeah, see, I don't want that either, so... Yeah, I so gotta try something months? different. If if you don't try anything new, then maybe it would be six months before you tried to go back to your shitty dating style anyway. So why not modulate it? Why not start today with something that takes three months to come to fruition? But mm-hmm. again, it's your rule. It can be fifty days or thirty days or whatever. But maybe clearly- thirty days. Mm-hmm. Thirty days, I can go to their house, but not have sex with them. It could be. 30 days and two references because it's perfectly appropriate to ask somebody for references in this community. Yeah, I've heard that, but no one's ever given them to me. Then don't talk to them. <laughs> like that's a red flag. But what if they were to ask me? I don't have any references. You don't have an ex? You don't have any I don't friends. have an ex that I talk to. Yeah, well, I, have a, I have friends. That's a problem. What? That you don't have an ex that you are I have, speaking I, terms with. Well, I've only had one boyfriend. Uh-huh. And a string of terrible people that you've been involved with. Exactly. <laughs> Time to get some good resume builders, Sean. Mm-hmm. References don't have to be ex-partners, especially for new people. That's really tough because in the vanilla world, we tend to burn bridges. But mm-hmm. the BDSM community is small. It is expansive, but it is small. You're going to want to make good impressions. And you're going to want to keep in touch with your ex-partners. I've already made shitty impressions. It's not too late. (laughs) It's not too late. Like, okay, the one event that I went to, I'm 99% sure that the guy that was watching me, whatever, and then he told me how rude I was and blah, 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 and uninvited me to his party. I'm... 99% sure he said something to the woman that runs the event. Everybody knows he's an asshole. I guarantee it. How do you? Because he's been an asshole. 
<laughs> you think he's just an asshole to you? No, no, but I feel... <laughs> But then I'm like, how is he allowed to like be at these events if he's Cause being what a predator? Because we, what, where's the trial system? Where's the, you know, where's the probationary board? Like, well, you I know, feel like, like if what it's are we supposed to do? Not let him come. Tattoo his face? No, but at least at this place, the event that I went to, there was like a whole checkoff list. If you weren't on the list, you can't come in. He shouldn't be on the list. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, that's why you talk to event promoters. Like, that's why talking to the event promoter is a good idea about your experience. Well, he probably got there first. Doesn't and matter. she never no, asked no, no, me about no. it. So, yeah, she never asked you about it because she's got a lot of things happening. But if you reached out to her and said, hey, I wanted to let you know that I had an experience with somebody from your event that was extremely negative. Mm-hmm. Do you, don't you think she's going to want to hear that? I think they're friends. Mm. Even if they are friends, you can only hear it so many times before they go, you know what? Like, I, I'm tired of hearing it. Okay. Don't discount your own input. So there's that. And then I already got somebody in trouble. I just. <sighs> you didn't get anybody in trouble. You're right. They got themselves in trouble. Mm-hmm. So don't go ruining your own reputation in your mind. You're young and inexperienced. Do you think, Sean, that you are the first person to come into the BDSM community who was both young and inexperienced? No. Do you think that your behavior would be a surprise to people who are experienced? No. No. (laughs) We all come in from not knowing. We all come from a place of not knowing the community. And it takes time. It's Mm -hmm. It's a cultural change. So it takes time. And I and I urge you not to give up. But you need to learn the culture before you take many more chances and get hurt. I don't know if you're still seeing a therapist, but those issues of self-worth are going to make life really hard for you. And there's strategies. I'm not, I'm not prepared to execute those strategies, but you know, I know that you don't have to live with that. It doesn't have to be permanent. It does, it's permanent if you never look at it, but you can undo it. You can unpack it. Hey, everybody. It's Ezra. Do some of these challenges sound like some of the things you've been dealing with? Maybe your challenges are very different, but you just love to have somebody to work on them with. Well, you're not alone on your journey. I'm here to help. So email askezra8 at gmail.com or visit us at askezra.info and maybe we can set up a session where we just focus on you. All right, back to the last component of our show. So what's the plan, Sean? What's the plan? I don't know. What is the plan? I don't have one currently. I would, I would continue the exercise of like the little sister exercise, like depersonalize the messages that you know you need to hear Mm -hmm. and write them down. Be stricter than you feel like you need to be because you can always ease up, right? That's true. So like give yourself rules, get yourself a collar that Mm -hmm. that signifies your adherence to those rules. So almost like reward yourself for taking the chance with something that's nice and pretty. Also, give yourself permission to check in and adjust. So if maybe 14 days in, you say, okay, 14 days, I'm going to look at these rules and say, what's serving me and what's really holding me back and really be be your own master so that when somebody comes along, you're ready. I think a big problem that I've seen happen is that submissives will come in and, and have like no good boundaries. And then they'll sort of say, well, I'll get a dom that will give me boundaries. And you make yourself really vulnerable to a dom who either doesn't have good boundaries or is going to give you boundaries that are not safe or unsustainable or unhealthy. So if you can establish good boundaries for yourself, then when you come into that relationship, when you have a chance to get into that relationship, you'll have a good set of boundaries to measure them against. Does that sound like a doable plan? It does. (laughs) I could do that. Yeah. It doesn't have to be impossible. Mm -hmm. It's just steps, you know? And I think, you know, you've had some negative experiences. And the last thing I want for you, Sean, is to think that there's only negative experiences. There's really good ones. There's really like attuned, empathetic, sensitive partners who not only can hear and respect your boundaries, but will help you establish them. And there's partners out there who will help you communicate, will help you negotiate, will help you you know, establish and maintain those boundaries. 
But the best thing that you can do is to learn to do those on your own first. And it's glorious. I remember feeling so frustrated that there was no way to like improve how valuable I was sexually, right? It was just kind of like, that was the hand I was dealt. And then I learned about BDSM and you can learn all kinds of skills that make you more valuable of a lover. And for you right now, self-knowledge and communication are the two most valuable skills that you can gain to be a more valuable lover. So I'm just going to date myself. Yeah, now. do it. I think you're worth it. <laughs> yeah. I date That's me. the plan. You know the best thing about dating yourself? What? Uh, you always get some. <laughs> it always goes well. <laughs> yeah, that's Like, true, well, that was actually. a terrible date, but let's have a hand job. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you're too fun, Sean. You're going to get me in trouble. I know. Sorry. <laughs> Thanks for watching the Ask Ezra podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, share it with your friends on social media. If you would like to review this episode, please do so at Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. If you'd like to support the episode, go to patreon.com slash askezra and you can sign up for our mailing list at askezra8 at gmail.com. Lastly, if you'd like to find out if intimacy coaching is right for you, visit askezra.info. Thanks for watching and don't forget to tune in next time.